Welcome back to another episode of Inner Warm Up. Today we have one of our Taking Care With episodes where we get to bring in someone else to talk about what self-care looks like for them. So today I am really excited because we have Ayo Rinde, Iron Lowo, Ifan Tunji. She is a hip hop and R&B bar instructor and a huge advocate for holistic living. I could tell you more about Ayo Rinde, but I think it'd be better if I officially invited her on and let her tell you more about herself. So Ayo Rinde, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be speaking to you today. I am so excited to have you. So if you could, can you tell us a little bit more about who you are and what you do in the world? Yeah, absolutely. So I am the founder of Bright Eyed Joy, which is a platform that empowers Black women to really explore themselves through not only reflective and compassionate living, but also through body movement and sort of marrying and connecting the ideas of mind and body and really achieving a sense of really strong self-care through all of those things. Um, I'm also a bar instructor. um, And one way that I really love to reach out to the community and engage with them is through hip hop and R&B bar classes. There are not that many of them out there. So it is a really, really fun way for me to not only connect with Black women, but also encourage them to try a type of exercise that many of us, I don't think, know much about in a really safe and welcoming, comforting environment. I love that that is part of what you do. Um, So I grew up dancing and was used to doing a lot of traditional ballet bar exercises, but for some reason, doing actual bar classes is so intimidating to me. I've started to do more of them, but it's something about like the, the burn and I know that it's coming, but then I'm afraid of it. So I'm, I'm personally excited to take one of your classes because I think if I had the right playlist behind me, it would make it easier. I still do bar probably like maybe twice a month probably once a month, but I'm always like, okay, I got to mentally prepare myself for it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think a lot of people find it really intimidating and that's kind of where the Beyonce themed or sort of black women empowerment themed playlists come in, right? Because it really um, sort of gets people excited to get through it or gets people excited to even take the class if they don't know what it is. (laughs) Yeah. Sometimes that's all you need. And I appreciate it you too saying there isn't a lot of that. I feel like there's, you see trap yoga or hip hop yoga, but there isn't necessarily a lot of that for the bar space. And so I'm excited for you that you're kind of trailblazing that. Thank you. I, I really appreciate it. Well, I brought you on and had you take our take care assessment. For those of you listening who aren't sure what that is. It's our 75 question assessment that measures your well-being across five dimensions. And I wholeheartedly believe you hear me say this all the time that you are your own best expert. I also think it's really valuable to hear from other people in what works for them. So I read day scored highest in the sub dimension of sleep. It falls under the mental and emotional dimension in our assessment. And the reason that I put it there is because if you are well-rested, your brain and your ability to process emotions and your ability to process any task is, it's going to be able to do that a lot better than when you are not well-rested, when you're having interrupted sleep. I mean, you can think about this for yourself. You're probably a different person if you've gotten four hours of sleep versus if you've gotten eight hours of sleep. And so that's why it's there. I just like to give that context. So Irene, I would love to hear from you. What is your relationship to sleep and what are a few tips or, or things that you do that help you score so high in this dimension? Yeah, definitely. So it's so funny because when I took the assessment, I had to giggle a bit <laughs> at the fact that I got sleep as my my highest scoring area uh, because, fun fact, I am the youngest of 
five and we span 20 years, right? So we have, there's five of us. My oldest brother is like 44 at this point. And I, as the baby of the family, I'm always the one who's like, yeah, I don't really want to go out tonight. I think I'm going to go to bed instead. <laughs> <laughs> and they always make fun of me because I am that person who will protect my sleep at all costs. Um, and I think you really hit the nail on the head, Taylor, in terms of sleep being a very, very, or playing a really critical role in our mental health. And I think that is initially why I started paying so close attention to my sleep patterns is because I typically suffer from a lot of anxiety and, you know, I'm grew up on, you know, my mother is very much Miss Eastern medicine, this and that. <laughs> so therefore, I'm always trying to find more homeopathic ways of, of treating my my mental uh, health stuff. And sleep was a big one. And for me, my anxiety is less apparent and less, um, I guess, less forceful if I sleep well. Uh, so that is kind of what it means to me and, and why I focus on it so much. I love that. I love that you were able to draw that connection between sleep and your anxiety. And also it sounds like having some support too from your mom and making you think or encouraging you to think more holistically about those connections in your health and well-being. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, I think the the first tip of mine uh, that I guess is a good segue is to really take an assessment of your sleeping and your mood patterns. So like, let's say, I don't know, take inventory of a week or two of various levels of sleep that you have and think, okay, you know, how did I feel this day when I slept X amount of hours versus how did I feel this day when I slept a longer period of time, because that really begins to kind of show you the data, if you will, of, okay, this is something that I may need to prioritize a lot more because I will not feel my best if I don't. Yeah, I love that. I love in assessment. I'm actually in the process right now of starting to catalog some of how I use my time and how that makes me feel. And doing that for sleep makes a lot of sense too. And as I'm hearing you say this, I just want to encourage the listener, like this is something to actually do. It's so easy to nod along and be like, yeah, that's a good tip, but actually please take a week and do that and see what, what insights you're able to gain. Absolutely. It's, it's super helpful. And I think kind of ties back to just being more reflective and also not beating yourself up either. Right. Like, if you didn't get a week of good sleep, that could be a number of things that is not is outside of just sort of personal responsibility. Um, but that is, I think, the the biggest one. But I will say another really great thing that I've been into lately is really making sure that your sleep, your resting area is somewhere you want to be. When I moved to New York almost three years ago at this point, I <laughs> my thing was like, you know what, for the first time in my life, I am going to invest in a good mattress, good sheets, good pillows. Like I need this sleep to be immaculate because this city can run you rampant. <laughs> and I want a good, lovely place to lay my head. And I think that, you know, another great thing to do is think about how, you know, what colors symbolize rest for me, right? Or do I like a ton of pillows on the bed or do I like just the normal one or two? And what types of sheets do I like? Do I like the cotton sheets? Do I like, you know, linen sheets, which is, I've never had linen sheets. I've heard they're great, but you know, well, on my price range. <laughs> um, but that is, that's another thing that I think is really great because I love my bedroom and I love sort of ending the day and going in there and just being able to take a deep sigh of relief. So that's really important too. Ooh, I really love that. And that's something that I personally am taking away is something that I need to do as well. Like my room is fine and I end the day like pleasantly exhausted. So I go to bed, but I wonder what are those little things that could like make this that much more of 
a luxurious experience and make me want to get into bed. I guess one thing that I do have my in-laws for my birthday got me um, a weighted blanket and falling asleep under uh, falling asleep under a weighted blanket. Like I feel so much calmer. Otherwise, I mean, my mind honestly still goes in a million places for a few minutes, but it's drastically reduced by having that weighted blanket on top of me. Absolutely. Honestly, weighted blankets, they might be a bit of an investment, but I have one as well. And I love it. Like there will be some nights where I do have a bit of trouble falling asleep. And then I'll remember that I have my weighted blanket at the at the bottom of my bed and not on top of me. And I put it on and then I'm just out like a lay. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> this is incredible. Yeah, it definitely is an investment. And like I said, mine was a gift. So if you have anyone in your life who's looking for a gift to give you, or even like, hey, instead of buying me something else, maybe you put a little, a little something, something towards my weighted blanket. You've got two people here telling you that it's it might be worth exploring. Yes. Do join the the weighted blanket gang because it is worth it. It is worth it. <laughs> Well, thank you. I love what I'm taking away from what you shared is that it's really being observant, both of kind of the, the, I don't know if physiology makes sense, I guess, kind of physiology. Uh, uh, (laughs) Y'all are just hearing me like think out loud right now, Mm -hmm. but kind of the mechanics of how you sleep and the logistics of how much sleep you're getting and being mindful of that. And then also looking at your space and seeing if there are shifts that you can make there. So it is shifts and maybe going to bed earlier or waking up a little bit later if that's accessible to you. But also it could be a little shift like I sleep on a satin pillowcase. A silk pillowcase probably would feel even better, but we're talking about making things a little bit more accessible, satin pillowcases are more accessible price point wise than silk pillowcases. And that might be the little tweak that works for you. So just being really present and having your eyes open both on how much time you're spending on sleep and in your space. Did I sum that up? Well, I feel like I got a little rambly on the, on the satin pillowcase. (laughs) Absolutely. I mean, I think that that fully encompasses it. And I think if, if I could add one more small thing is just that, having some sort of ritual or routine that you do every night, it does not have to be some long process, but it goes a long way. You know what I mean? Like for me, I am the first to admit that I'm not the one who can just put my phone in the other room and then be like lights out. (laughs) But what I do do is like read an article on my phone and that's step one. Right. And then Step two is put the phone down and read a book, right? And reading for me is a small way for me to just kind of wind down and actually stop focusing on the 10 million things going on in my head and zeroing in on this one really great story or whatever it it may be. So, so yeah, that would, that'd be my last thing is establishing some sort of small ritual It could be skincare related, it could be reading, it could be, you know, prayer, meditation, um, and sort of making that something that signals to your brain that it's time to rest. And you kind of just blew my mind with the transitional piece because we do often kind of, I'll speak from the eye. I can often find it difficult to be like, okay, here's the hard cutoff for my phone. And so that idea of the transitional activity on your phone before setting it aside is potentially game changing. So I've got another thing that I need to try to that just like (laughs) unlocked something for me. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's hard. You know, we're a little too attached to our phones, but we have compassion for ourselves in that space. (laughs) And and we just adjust accordingly. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Always extending more and more compassion to ourselves. Well, thank you for those tips and for just sharing some of your context around what helps you rest well and how we can start to find those things for ourselves. If people want to hear more 
from you if they're intrigued by the idea of hip hop and R&B bar, or they were attracted to some of the things that you're talking about around holistic health, how can they stay in touch with you? So I am on Instagram at Bright Eyed Joy, um, and I will soon be be doing uh, just a couple of outdoor classes. Um, I'm actually Taylor going to be in Chicago. I mean, I'm from there, so <laughs> so uh, my sister and I may actually do a joint bar and yoga class soon in the next couple of months, um, and I will probably be doing one here in Brooklyn as well. So. Those are the ways you can reach me. If you follow my Instagram, you'll definitely be able to see all of the content I have, but also class announcements as well. Lovely. Well, thank you. And everyone will make sure that Irene Day's information is in the show notes. So don't feel like you have to scramble now. You can come back. It will be there. And I want to say thank you again to you, Irene Day, for being willing to share and give us a peek into some of your self-care and thank you to you listener for being present in the conversation as well. Thank you and take care.